Welcome back to the next tutorial. Last time we left off making the activator slide down and we can press the button to collect notes. So this time we're going to do more activators basically. So let's start copying them in. Um, I'm going to make them offset a little bit. They're all going to be along the negative 2 and the y. And I'm going to offset them by 0.5 because I want to have 10 of them. And I'm just going to control D all of our activators in. So there'll be five on each side, making a total of 10 different notes, five and five. And I have a color wheel open up on my right screen here, and I'm going to use all the, um, the colors from that for my activators. And I might make them a slightly darker color on the actual um, activator and then make the notes the pure color. But that's all a fact, that's up to you. So I'm using the Unity eyedropper and I'm selecting the colors on my other monitor to give me the color wheel that I want. Oops. There we go. So this is the new look of the game. We have our activators. We have our notes coming down. Um, our notes should be offset too by about 0.5. That's rotation, my bad, 0.5. There you go. Our note comes down. And then of course you wanna make the notes the right color to correspond with your activators. But for now that works. And I want to make some sort of response that you press down the activator. Like maybe make it get darker or something. So on this update where we press down our activator, we want to um, not only destroy the note, but we want to change our color maybe for that one um, frame. So we're actually going to do a um, coroutine here. So I enumerator, um, we're going to call it the, uh, We'll call it, I don't know, pressed, I guess. And now when we update, we press that key down for that frame, it destroys the note. And now we're gonna start this by doing a start protein uh, pressed. So we start pressed and now we have to do a change in color and then return back to that old color. So to do that, we're going to take our old color and we're going to make that saved. So color um, old equals uh, get component sprite render 2D or sprite render dot color. So we save our old color. Now we're going to change our color by making it whatever color we want it to be. So we'll say um, we're actually going to get our sprite render up here just so we don't have to do it more than once. So um, sprite render render um, called sr. And then we'll make a void awake up here, and we're just gonna say that sr is equal to get component sprite render. Then we have our sprite render. We can just call sr dot color, and it's a lot better that way. So it takes our sprite render color, sets that to old. Now it's gonna take our sprite render color and make that equal to a new color whatever color we want, we can make it go black, gray. I'll just make it go black um, for the heck of it. So it goes black. And now we have a yield return um, new wait for seconds. And we'll wait for like 0 0.2 seconds. And then we'll say that our sprite render dot color is equal to our old color. And that should work. When I press down my button now, it should make the note temporarily turn black and then turn back to our old color. Aha, but only if it actually successfully presses the note down, which is not what we want. We want it to do it regardless of um, whether or not we, could, we press the, the note down, so. And we actually want this original color, the color old, here. We're going to just find that in the top here. 
color old now in our um, start so void start we're going to define what our color old is we're going to say that old is equal to our um, sprite render dot color there you go so now when we press F we get that everything changes because um, everything is the same activator I might even make it do a little bit less I just I don't want it to change for one frame and then go back I want I like that a lot. So it turns black to symbolize that you pressed it down. Maybe I'll make it even less. Not one frame, but just a little bit more. That's perfect. Okay, so if you're wondering why all the activators go off, it's because all the activators are set to F. So we have to change that. We gotta make this one set to A. We gotta make this one set to um, S way down here there it is got to make this one set to D this one is set to um, F it is this one will be set to G this one will be set to H this one will be set to J Bear with me here. This one will be set to K. And the last one, oh, second to last one is set to L. And then the very last one is set to semicolon, which may be at the top here. Can I just like type the key in now? <laughs> if only. Um, semicolon. Let's try it out. We can press each note in order. And then we can reach for those notes in the middle. Pretty satisfying. You can see exactly what I'm typing right now, too. Pretty cool. And we have our notes coming down now. So if I were to do that note, I can actually press it on its way down. Thinking of making the note be a little bit faster, though. 5 just isn't going to cut it for me. I mean, 4 just isn't going to cut it. Now let's say that we had multiple notes coming down now. Here we have our notes coming down. It's pretty natural. You can just press them over. So, we're basically there. We just need to add some sort of scoring system and um, a losing system and so on and so forth. Maybe even lanes, just so you could tell what each note is in lane wise. Um, yeah. So this next step, we're going to do. I think here. We have our notes, we have our buttons, we could do score, but I want to put the music in actually for now. So we're just going to drag and drop the music into the scene. Um, make sure it's not 3D. We do want to play it on awake. We don't want it to be 3D though, so make sure spatial blend is 2D. And we're just going to put it in the center, and then like a little bit down, just so it's out of our way. So then we play. We should get the music playing. And now it's just a matter of really lining up the notes. So you'd have to play it, and this is a lot of experimenting just to find out when the note should come in. bit higher up. Once you have the first note, it's a good point to start working. <laughs> Pretty close. Maybe one lower. Now you gotta find the right speed to go at. So what I'm going to do up here actually 
Um, just I'm going to leave that there as a marker because now I know where to start. And I'm going to start organizing my files a little more, a bit, a little bit more, and coloring the notes to their correct color, basically. So I'm going to put all the activators in a new empty object called activators because we're getting really unorganized. So we can select all of these activators. I'm actually just going to do it this way. Select them all and then use control. Drop it into our activator. I actually forgot to center out. Crap. So put zero, zero in here. Center out your activator. Very important to stay organized. Especially when we're going to have tons of notes. So we have our song storms now in the game. Um, we have our main camera and we have our notes which are going to go into an object called notes that will be centered out as well. And we can just shift and drag our notes into our notes. We have our activator, our song of storms, and we have our main camera. Looking good. So I'm going to put an end to this video. Um, not really much was done in this video to be honest. It's 11 minutes of working on it. But next video we're going to start doing a scoring system and working with um, actually making it correspond to the song.